Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lionberger Construction. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Today's show circles back to a topic we've discussed several times and in various ways. Let's just call it jobs, jobs, jobs. Taylor Johnson is Director of Talent Attraction for the Roanoke Regional Partnership. Morgan Romeo is Executive Director at Virginia Career Works, Blue Ridge Region. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Well, um, let's, talk about let's talk about Taylor. You first. Uh, when this airs, you'll be seven, a couple of months maybe into your new role. Tell us about your role as Director of Talent Attraction for the Royal Regional Partnership. We had your predecessor, Aaron Bertram, here uh, with her new role. But talk about that, what that's all about talent attraction. Yeah, so we're looking to bring talent here to the Roanoke region and it's important that those folks that we're attracting understand how much Roanoke has changed and how much the region has changed and how many industries that are here in the Roanoke Valley and the jobs are really great. Um, so my job is basically to, you know, sell that narrative and what a great person to do that. <laughs> right. Guess. And you you have the story. You were here and you left and you went to Northern Virginia, That's the Bright Lights, D.C. for <laughs> 10 years or so. And talk about your journey coming back and how you might be able to use that to, when you talk to someone about coming back. You can actually, you know, you've, you've walked the walk. Yeah, I, I'm the talent narrative story myself walking. So, yeah, I lived in Arlington for almost a decade after school and, um, you know, loved Arlington and everything about it. But... I think uh, after you live through a pandemic, you start to think about what matters in your life. And, um, you know, having grass was important to me, but also affording to be able to afford to buy a house here mm -hmm. and be close to my family, um, but also have the job opportunity was really important. And it came up and I took it. So I'm very happy to be back and excited for all the opportunity here. Before we talk to Morgan Romeo, who's your sister, by the way, uh, I think you know that. Um, <laughs> has, I mean, it's, it's amazing how much the pandemic has really made, I mean, you can see it now with the supply chain and inflation and all that, but uh, you think th uh, the pandemic and all that will make more people, Morgan, think about changing their lives and maybe slowing down a little bit or smelling the roses or being closer to family, that type of thing? Absolutely. I mean, I sat down and thought about all the things that were important to me and that I loved about living close to the city and I realized it was all the things about the culture of DC that I liked doing with the people that I loved about that area and we were all leaving um, for the same reason. Oh, so a lot of uh, some of your other contemporaries up there were leaving also? Yeah, uh, to build houses in other parts of Virginia that were more affordable. Um, to move for opportunities that were similar to that they had in Northern Virginia. Um, you know, it just makes sense when the pandemic has really affected rent status in Northern Virginia. It was kind of wild. Um, mm -hmm. And just to be able to, you know, have a lifestyle that makes sense. It felt like, I told Morgan, you know, I felt like a, a weight was almost lifted off my shoulders the minute I had my resignation and it started to feel real that I was moving back, you know, Living the rat race for so right. long, it just. And you start thinking, okay, well, I'll go down and uh, I'll go down to uh, downtown Roanoke, I'll go to Alejandro's <laughs> tonight or something. Like that. You already start thinking about what you want to do when you yeah, come back. Yeah, yeah. There's exciting new restaurants in Roanoke too, and I've already got to experience a couple of them. And you know, it's just so much different. I like to tell my friends if Roanoke was how it is now, about 15 years ago, I might have considered moving here instead of Northern Virginia right. back then. Yeah, well, Rome, I've been here 25 years. Rome's definitely a lot cooler than it was 25 <laughs> years ago. Sure. Like when I came here, the sidewalks rolled up at 5 o'clock on a Friday night. <laughs> for the most part, so. Sure. Uh, Morgan Romeo, you are the, uh, the director, executive director of the Virginia Career Works Center in the Blue Ridge region. Talk about that. That's on Thurlane Lane Road and what, what, what that's all about. Sure. So um, I'm the, the executive director of the Virginia Career Works. We're actually a local workforce development board. So we're federally funded, created by federal law. Um, but we're also a nonprofit, so really trying to expand what we do beyond federal legislation and federal dollars. But one of the roles that we do is we oversee job training activities and workforce in the region. And so we do that virtually because the pandemic obviously made us, mm -hmm. you know, kind of consider in person versus virtual. So we were excited to take all of that virtual and we're keeping it that way. Are honestly. You really, it, yeah. Does it just work better or are you going to wait till the pandemic 
goes away. Access. It's really about access. Okay. Um, so when we were having folks come to our center, which is still there, you know, we still have services for individuals, um, and we do have folks coming in now. Um, but a lot of people have still chosen to access us by their smartphone or a simple FaceTime call or a phone call, and we can still provide the exact same services to them that way. So we saw a lot more folks having the um, easily accessible, uh, easily accessing our services during the mm -hmm. pandemic because we went virtual. And what services are they accessing you for? Is it to sure. look for a job or they want, do they want information about training for a job or what? Yeah, that's changed a little bit, uh, obviously, over the course of the pandemic and now. Um, during the pandemic, you know, we did see, we had a very um, low number of individuals actually seeking our services. Um, that, that went into, um, things that came into account with that would be people not wanting to go to work because of the pandemic. There was a lot of funding for unemployment insurance at that point. We're starting to see that and a lot of folks are just looking for help for jobs. Um, a lot of the individuals that we're seeing have been laid off or separated from their job in the hospitality, retail industry, they don't want to go back. Because of money or they, they look um, for, they, they, do they know there's jobs out there that if they retrain a little bit, they might be able to get a yes, job? Yes, I think it's that. I think that the pandemic allowed them to take some time, kind of like Taylor said, to process you know, what they want to do and where they want to be. And I think that has, is moving them a little bit away from the rat race, if you will, if the hospitality retail industry. So they're looking at, you know, um, going into different industries with a uh, more funding or more better pay and better benefits. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting though, the hospitality retail industry is actually kind of stepping up to the plate. I mean, all of their wages are going up. Um, some of them more than others in other industries pay. But I still think that just the uh, stigma around hospitality, the long hours, the shifts that change, the kind of fast pace of it mm -hmm. is moving folks away from it. And then of course their jobs were lost during the pandemic and they don't wanna go through that again. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting interesting how things have changed, and I've been in the Outer Banks twice within the last couple of months. And they're begging for people to yeah. go work there, and 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 there was someone there was a few of them that were closed on a busy weekend day because they can't get enough help that type of thing. What have you seen, uh, Taylor? What would tell? We'll talk about what you were doing in in Northern Virginia before you came here. Sure, I worked for VDP, which is the Virginia Economic Development Partnership. I managed a discretionary grant for the state that would basically incentivize businesses that created jobs and brought capital investment to the region. So what did you see during the pandemic? What, what happened during the pandemic? Were they just, people just needed more money or they just weren't able to hire enough people or what? Yeah, I mean, it's the same, same story every time I talk to a business is, we need workers, we need workers. And I wish I had a magic wand to fix that, but it's a problem not just in Virginia, but throughout the nation. Everybody needs workers. Um, but one big thing that I was seeing is I think the pandemic is truly going to affect the entire real estate market as far as corporate real estate. Businesses have realized we don't necessarily need our workers to come in and work in a space. Right, we don't need a 20-story building, you know, with no. whatever. And rent is crazy up there, especially for corporate real estate. I mean, it's almost like it got more expensive because of the pandemic, because of the demand mm -hmm. to fill those spaces. So what's going to happen? In, in, you know, both of you can answer this, but as far as remote working, Morgan, and even in some things that are non-traditional remote, do, are, are, more, are more employers more willing to let more people work at home? Do you, can you see that? I think it depends on the industry, and I think it depends on what you're talking about. Um, I think that everyone, especially if you look at it from the job seeker perspective, um, yes, job seekers are expecting flexibility in remote work um, if it's there. I think when you start talking about a production environment where you're producing goods and the traded sectors, it's a little more difficult right. to provide that work from home flexibility to everyone. Um, but yes, I do think that you'll start to see businesses try to integrate flexibility and remote work as much as they can. Um, and Taylor's right. I mean, I think it will potentially affect real estate. I think it might help a little bit here that we have our industries are manufacturing, healthcare, they're going to need buildings. Um, but I do think areas like Northern Virginia are going to see a big shift in that. Mm. Is, is the, uh, Taylor, for what you, you're doing now, uh, the talent attraction, do you think that it, it, it might be something that the Roanoke area region can use to its advantage to, with more companies maybe allowing workers that, with a company based in Nova, that they'll allow their workers to be based here? Yeah, and that's something that we're definitely considering and focusing our efforts on as far as the narrative of the type of 
you know, industries and the type of workers that we're looking for. I do think there's something to be said about a younger generation that they want that human interaction, though they might not necessarily yeah. want to be remote because they had most of their higher education remote and they're craving that human interaction. So, you know, we're kind of working with multiple generations that have a different mindset about this work-life balance. Yeah. And after 10 years of being in the office, they'll be ready to, <laughs> to be, be around with people. Have some flexibility. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, Morgan, what's going on at the Virginia Career Works? I mean, what, what are you hearing from employers? What do they want? Bodies. Okay. <laughs> Bodies and people. Um, I think, you know, we have amped up some of our um, in-person services again. Obviously, um, during the pandemic, we did a lot of virtual hiring events. Those were very successful, um, easily accessible for folks and easily accessible for employers. But uh, we are ramping them up and we're seeing an increase in folks that are coming in. Um, but again, it depends on what employers you have there. Mm -hmm. um, so employers are, I think, are really going to, when they say they need people, are really going to have to step up to the plate to be a little bit more modernistic and improve their culture for what they have for folks. Um, I have been comparing our job seeker market to almost the housing market because, you know, there's sometimes it's a buyer's market and sometimes it's a seller's market. Right now in the workforce world, it is a job seekers market. Right. They can demand and ask better for... Better wages, maybe better conditions. Absolutely. And if they don't find it with one employer, they're going to go to the next one. And those opportunities are available everywhere, so they have that ability. So do you think employers are willing to, to be a little bit flexible? Are you talking to them about that look, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think um, we've, we've started some conversations with them about just, again, what we're seeing with job seekers, the remote work flexibility, the um, increased vacation days. And, you know, folks, before the pandemic, I think a lot of employers could tout the health insurance, the retirement benefits, and that's still in play. Definitely, definitely an important piece, but they're, de they're demanding more. More that, you know, focusing on mental health for um, their employees, focusing on uh, work-life balance, as Taylor said. So I think employers are going to have to get a little creative and really turn their recruitment efforts into a marketing effort of what they offer. Yeah. It's interesting that what the pandemic really did, where people, a lot of people had to stay home. Some of them got that extra three to $600 a month. They figured, hey, you know what? I could pay more bills with that extra money than what I was making. So if I go back to the workforce, I want to find something I like working from home. You know, that, that, that sort of mentality. Yeah, and I think also what happened is we had a lot of folks, um, particularly women, uh, leave the workforce because of childcare and everything we saw with the schools, um, you know, the shutting down the virtual learning and then, you know, modified schedules when they went back. And even this year, you're starting to see um, greater restrictions and uh, protocol on COVID exposures and things like that. So women have really taken the heat. I mean, I think you'll see in some job reports in September, of 2021 when the job reports released 300,000 jobs were added and all of them went to men. Wow. Yeah, I think I've read maybe at least 5% of the female workforce has not gone back to work. Right. And I think what happened is when the fem when when women don't go back to work, I think that during the, you know, the pandemic lasted it's it's still going. Um, you know, a year, two years families got adjusted to living on that one income. And so what's the benefit of going back when they've learned to live on that one income? Right, especially if you're spending half your income on childcare child or something, care. Yes. and you get to spend more time with the kids. And also right. I think, you know, until the pandemic is really over, you still have school districts shutting down a week here yeah. and that type of thing. So you've got to be with an employer who, who understands that. Mm -hmm. And if you're That's not right. in certain industries, if you're making widgets or something. I mean, I've watched Morgan do it with her child. It's hard. And it's a hard adjustment, and even on the child, like to understand, well, why does mommy can't play with me all day, you know? And it's different, but, you know, adapting a workforce that can be adaptable for their employers, I think, is important. Yeah. And I know Morgan touched on, like, culture. Again, that's something that we really are going to work on at Runoff Regional Partnership as part of our marketing. You know, we, we are encouraging businesses to obviously market their culture and whatnot, but they also need to market the job itself and the day in and day out and what that looks like and how would that work for the individual because mm -hmm. that's important. So we're encouraging them to do a little bit more visual job postings, like more so like a job actually visual. In this a, is what you would do, that type of yeah, thing? Yeah, like a video of a day in the life and that right. serves as the job posting, the actual paper that you would see or the right. internet source. So I, I think that will be a good marketing tool. And we're also working on an employer toolkit to help our 
employers understand, you know, what they need as far as resources, what is available for them to find the right talent. And then I'm looking to make something like an employee toolkit. What's it like to be an employee of a business here in the Roanoke Valley? What's it like to, you know, have a family here? What's it like for my children here? Um, to really give employers and potential employees all the sources and resources they need. Yeah, I think you, really, you need to tap into that because, I mean, both of my younger kids, they've left Roanoke for the big city. They're Let's both bring in, them back. Huh? Let's bring them back. You know, and my, <laughs> my daughter, she's 26 now, and they're both in Tampa, and her brother's 30, and, um, you know, the, and he graduated school late, just got a job down there. But she said, I might come back in, in a few years or 10 years, but, you know, uh, I, I understand the lore of the big city, that type of thing. But, you know, if you, but, you, know, if you can tell people, look, D.C.'s a four-hour ride away. Yeah. We take the train or yeah. drive if you want. Atlanta's seven hours away. Charlotte's three and a half hours away. It's really not that big of a deal. But here you can, you can kind of be a big fish in a small pond here. I think there's more opportunities here. Sure. Well, yeah. and I think, you know, Taylor was right. You know, we both went to William Byrd High School. Go Terriers. Um, you know, right. and uh, we couldn't get out of here fast enough. I mean, when we went to school. And, you know, when we graduated, it didn't even cross my mind to come back. It didn't cross hers, you know. And the Roanoke that was here when we grew up, which was the only thing to do was to go hang out in the Walmart parking lot, because Bonsack Walmart was a really big deal at that point. Uh -huh. um, or Vent McDonald's. Or Vent McDonald's, oh, yes, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's another one. Um, you know, when we, when we try to talk to friends that we graduate with that are in Northern Virginia or other places, they still have that picture of Roanoke. And so, right. you know, it's, it, I'm, glad that ta I'm, I'm glad for many reasons that Taylor's back, but, you know, I think it's all about changing that and showing people that it's changed a lot over the years. There's a whole lot more to do. We're the largest city west of Richmond in um, Virginia now, and I think it, we're starting to really showcase that. So Taylor can, as far as you know, attracting people, but also retaining people, is there a better job that local governments or the regional partnership or whatever the chambers can do to really sell kids, maybe starting in junior high or high, uh, middle school or high school, sure. about the opportunities here. Get more employers in, get more kids out shadowing employers, you know, th in whatever they like to do, that, to, to, to get them thinking about staying here. Sure. And the main thing is that we all work together. We're all working for the same thing, so we need to work together. But Morgan can probably answer that better because she has a great career works fair for eighth graders here in the Roanoke Valley that is awesome. And it really gets them attracted to different um, you know, industry sectors that are available here, mm -hmm. different jobs, and gets them thinking about what they might want to do and continue education once they go into high school if they want to go into a specialized program or whatnot. But I can let her speak more Well, and, and <laughs> I've heard about some of those things, and, and I think it's a great idea because when I was in junior high, they called it that. I had no idea sure. what I wanted to do or whatever. When you do those job fairs, like for the middle schoolers, do their eyes light up? I mean, do they get oh, into, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. So, you know, obviously, again, hate to talk about the pandemic again, but, you know, that kind of thwarted a little bit. But we did our first career quest event in 2019, and we had uh, almost 4,000 seventh graders come to the Salem Civic Center. And, and the goal was really to show them that, you know, there are jobs here. Um, you know, when I didn't know what was here. You know, when I, I will never forget, I went to visit Steel Dynamics, and just my eyes were like, I could not believe that this massive steel factory was sitting right downtown on the railroad. I ended up going home and, you know, talking to our dad, and he's like, oh, yeah, I worked there during the summers. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> you know, it, it was just, like, amazing. Yeah. Um, but so showing those kids what was there, they had a blast. I, the, the most popular event was the baby cow. Um, they had a lot of fun with the baby cow because I don't think half of them had ever seen a cow up close. Right. But um, showing them some of the jobs and the cool technology and, you know, working for the water authority. There's a perception, I'm not going to work in the sewers. That's not all they do. Mm -hmm. You know, look at all the cool gadgets they get to use and the cool, all the great skills you have to have to do that. So pandemic thwarted it, but the schools came back to us after that first event and they said, we have to keep doing this because for the first time, kids were actually saying talking about careers and connecting them to local opportunities so um, you know when you start talking about retention and taylor and i have talked about this retention is almost the, the big key here is awareness and outreach they just don't know what the opportunities right. are here and, and another thing that's really come to fruition is the changing culture or perception of cte programs 
Um, when we were career in and technical career education, technical right. education, yeah. When we were in school, you know, Arnold R. Burton was there, but um, I didn't know the, what right. the program. You were. know, we just thought, oh, that's that other school, you know. And I went and took a tour there, you know, a couple years ago, and I thought, oh my gosh, I wish I would have been able to go here. Great marketing programs, a robotics program, mm -hmm. advanced manufacturing, you know. And Roanoke City has a pro programs like this. They're amping theirs up. Botetourt has it. The county has it. Salem's getting into it. I mean, there's just so many opportunities. It almost seems like they should funnel every kid through that. Um, yeah. For at least one semester during Just to their, learn a trade, right, you right. know. And I know they're talking about building a bigger, uh, in rural County, a, bi yeah. a bigger Burton, a bigger CTE. Well, and I think that's all about increasing their capacity because, you know, some, some of their programs, they have wait lists. I mean, they have so many kids that want and they cannot take them, and that's just such a shame. And so, you know, a better building, Roanoke City's doing the same thing, turning William Ruffner into a CTE center just for William Fleming. Right, instead of having to go all the way to Correct. Patrick Henry Patrick campus. Patrick Henry, that's right. right. Yeah, so, I mean, just increasing their capacity to do more, and again, increase that awareness for kids of what's available. Hmm. Um, you know, wondering, Taylor, um, you know, as far as attracting, let's say, critical mass, is it, gonna, is it going to take... Uh, you know, more spin-offs coming out of the Fraylin Biomedical Research Institute or things coming out of the RAMP program downtown, the business incubator, where they start creating jobs. So we need, or are we going to have to have a big player come land here somewhere, a big fish? What do you think it's going to take to really, just to get a steady flow of people coming in? Sure. I don't think it's a big player. Um, for example, I... Um, I had been meeting with some colleagues that were like, oh, are you going to bring us the bit next Amazon distribution <laughs> center? No, because we don't need that. Of course, Amazon has great jobs and great opportunity, but I can't tell you how many times I was asked by smaller businesses in Northern Virginia, oh, do I even matter because, you know, there's Amazon here. Actually, yes, you matter and maybe matter even more because mm -hmm. every job matters. So I think what we can do first is focus on the jobs that are available and the industries that are looking to hire here. I mean, we have life sciences, we have manufacturing, we have healthcare, we have IT. I mean, there's everything here that people just don't know. So first and foremost, helping our current businesses be successful and hiring people is gonna be my number one mission. Hmm. Uh, Morgan, what do you see as far as uh, with Virginia Career Works? What, what business sectors are hiring right now? What do you look to be strong in the next year or so? Uh, well, I think, you know, as Taylor mentioned, Healthcare is always going to be a massive industry here. We have Carillion, which everyone knows. We have Lewis Gale, uh, HCA Healthcare. But what some people also don't realize is while we have two major, major medical centers here, we also have a major presence of long-term retirement, long-term healthcare uh, facilities. And so while they're different skill sets, they're similar jobs. So the nursing, nursing is just going to be huge. So if you want a job as a nurse here, come on. <laughs> Um, and I think, so that will continue to be a presence. I think that, um, you know, manufacturing is probably the number two for us. We have a lot of manufacturers um, it, surrounding the region. And of course we cover Roanoke Valley and Allegheny Highlands. And so um, helping those there. But also I think you're, we're going to see an emergence with everything going on with Fralin and the RAMP program, um, just that professional and scientific services. So your labs, your wet and dry labs, um, your IT of course goes into there. Our largest IT employer is Carillion um, because they have such a massive information technology need to run all their servers and things like that. So it, it's really just thinking about um, all those different things that are available in those industries. Hmm. Uh, Taylor, just a minute or two left up. You see any major changes happening in your role with the regional partnership or even a different direction for the regional partnership? Yeah, I, I think we need to have our presence known on social media. That's first and foremost. We need to have a little bit more presence in marketing as far as vamping it up to speak to a larger audience. So you're going to see us coming out soon. That's why they had to bring back a millennial, huh? Exactly. <laughs> so what's it like having your sister back in town? Amazing. I think my I think my son appreciates it, appreciates it more than anyone, so which makes her happy. So real quick before we go, um, do you does the Virginia Career Works do you sort of interface with like Virginia Western Community College oh, store as far as training programs? Absolutely. So our federal dollars and our funding that we have um, can actually be used to pay for courses at those, and so we partner with Goodwill and TAP and Virginia Western and Dabney Lancaster up in the north because there are folks who want jobs, but they need an extra skill or two or credential to be qualified for that. So we help folks do that, and absolutely, Virginia Western is one of our major players and a great partner at that. So.
Real quickly, uh, when you talk to people outside of Roanoke, do they do they have a lot of them heard of Roanoke at least? Well, yeah, I mean, most of my friends from I went to James Madison definitely know what Roanoke is, but they don't know what Roanoke has to offer. And that's so part of what your job is. That's what it is. All right, so look for some changes maybe soon. Sure. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Morgan Romeo, Virginia Career Works, Blue Ridge Region, and uh, Taylor Johnson, the uh, Director of Talent, uh, Talent Attraction for the Roanoke Regional Partnership. Thank you, ladies, sisters. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I'm Gene Moreno. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.